ever imagined that you'd live through a pandemic. These have been such challenging times and this project, the Staying Home Project, is designed to help you to honor what we've been living through, um, to create your own personal artifact, to help remember the highs and lows of these times. My name is Sarah and I started Staying Home Project first, working on some wooden houses that I found at Dollarama, um, like this. Unfortunately, we weren't able to find um, enough for everyone to have wooden houses, but very fortunately, we were able to design some houses made out of paper, like this, which is what we'll, most of you will be working on today. Um, so you can see the idea of the house is that you can really personalize it to symbolize what you want it to, to remember the things that have been important or challenging or meaningful to you during this time. Thank you for joining me. This activity should take you probably somewhere between 30 and 60 minutes. Okay, so to get started, it's always a good idea to gather your supplies. I'll show you what you'll need. Um, in your kit, you'll have one easy to assemble house template, some glue, so either a glue stick or some liquid glue such as Mod Podge, You'll want some scissors um, and then some optional items would be some markers, some paint. I find um, acrylic paint works best and if you're using paint or liquid glue you'll want some paint brushes, maybe a sponge brush. Um, it's great to have a variety of papers. You'll see I've got some newspaper clippings, some nice wrapping paper, um, even some calendar pages can be fun. I've got some old artwork of my daughter's, Shh, don't tell her. Um, those are just some examples. Also in your kit, we've got some COVID related words and some uh, drawings of themes that people might want to include. So you're welcome to cut things out from here as well. You might also have um, photos or, oh, I, I have um, an envelope with a stamp, um, another little envelope thing that says, thanks healthcare workers. Um, so anything that you can gather really um, is good. Um, just looking at what else, you might also want some tape, some stickers, I've got some washi tape here. Um, anything, you could even rifle through your recycling bin and see if you can find some interesting materials. I know on this um, house, I used parts of a tea box because I've sure been drinking a lot of tea during COVID. Um, and then lastly, we've found that having a square of cardboard to put at the bottom of the house can lend it a little bit more stability. So again, I went into my recycling box and found a chocolate wrapper. Oh, you're learning all about me already, um, that I will stick to the bottom of the house just to make it a bit stronger. Uh, if you don't have a square of cardboard, if you have a penny or some other similar, you know, slightly heavy object that you could fix on, use, probably using either a glue gun or some Mod Podge, that could also work. Um, so yeah, that's, those are the supplies that you'll want to gather to get started. So to prepare for this project, I want to invite you to ask yourself the following questions. You might want to take a little bit of time with these questions, possibly writing out the answers or even pausing to discuss with someone you trust. I'm going to read them out so I don't forget anything. So. The first few questions are, what have you lost as a result of the pandemic? What's been hardest for you? What have you missed? Take, a time, take some time to reflect on that. And now, how have you coped during the pandemic? Is there anything that's made this time a little easier? Have you started any new routines or hobbies? Next set of questions. What do you think you'll remember when you look back on the pandemic five, 10 or 15, 20 years from now? What do you want to remember? Let's turn the page. 
The next set of questions is about gratitude. Even in hard times, we can usually find things to be grateful for. What have you been grateful for during the pandemic? What have you gained? Are there things that you have learned about yourself, your family, the world? What's felt, sorry, what's felt most important to you during these times? And lastly, have there been any unexpected silver linings? What has brought little moments of comfort and joy to you? How have you grown? How's that for some thought-provoking questions? Um, they're all designed to get you reflecting on um, the many different challenges and sometimes even opportunities of this pandemic. And maybe as you reflect on your answers, you'll have an idea of some of the themes that you'd like to include when you make your house. And what I want to say is that this is your house, so please do what feels best for you. All of my prompts are just suggestions, so I'm giving you a big permission slip right now to do what you want to do with your house. Okay, so this is step one where we're going to build your house. So you've got the easy to assemble house template and you can see it's got um, sections that are already pre-folded. So essentially, you want to just fold along um, the different pre-folds and you can kind of use your thumbnail along with your index finger to kind of score and make it a, a sharper fold. So do that on all of the pre-folds. and help it to learn to stand, you know, as straight as possible. We've been joking that the houses are a little bit wobbly, but hey, aren't we all <laughs> during COVID? Um, so now you've got a simple house shape. That's the end of step one. Great, so now we're on step two, which is stabilizing the bottom of the house. I mentioned this earlier, and I've already pre-cut a piece of cardboard <laughs> from a, a chocolate bar wrapper. Um, that I will be sticking in here. So step three is to stop and think about decorating. Um, I want you to consider if there are particular colors or patterns or um, again themes that you'd like to include in decorating your house. Um, to give you some ideas, I find that I often gravitate towards um, black and gray, you can see white with these blank calendar pages here. To me, they sort of speak of the, the quietness of these times. Um, but I also really like to include yellow and orange because to me, they speak of hope. Now I know that those colors might feel different to you and there might be colors that really feel representative of the pandemic for you. So again, whatever feels right for you is the best choice. Okay, so step four, this is where the fun really begins, where we start to um, stick paper to all the different walls of the house. So you see you've got the outside walls and the inside, the floor, and then the roof the inside of the roof or the ceiling, and then the bottom too. Don't forget the bottom. It's always fun to have something, you know, if someone picks up the house and looks to see, oh, a nice little surprise down there. Um, I find, um, again, because we're trying to lend stability to the house, it, it can be really helpful to um, cut pieces more or less to the size of the different walls. So I've done some of that already, but I'll show you how I do this um, again for the the inside of the bottom. So um, whether it's with the bottom or if I were doing the side, I would just gently place the house 
onto the paper that I want to use. And if you have a corner like that, you can certainly use the corner. And then using a pencil, I forgot to mention that you might need a pencil, just trace along the edges like that. Can see the shape there and then take your scissors Okay, and then I've got my pre-cut one. So you may want to take some time to, um, you know, either go side by side and just cut the paper out and move, proceed organically or plan out the papers that you want to use and, um, and then glue them on um, once you've cut them out. There's no right or wrong. Oh, and what I want to show you with this is that um, I personally am really okay with imperfection. I think that that's part of the beauty of life. Um, so you'll see not all of my pieces will fit perfectly, um, and that is totally okay. You may choose um, to go that route as well and either leave that part a little bit blank in your finished product, or maybe that'll be a part that you'll cover up with some other paper or tape. So um, at this point, um, I always have a certain amount of not knowing about how the artwork, artwork is going to turn out, um, but it leaves us open to possibilities.
And at this point, I want to encourage you to take a little break. I think it's always good to step away from your art for a while. Um, maybe go get a cup of tea, have a little snack, and then come back because you might see it from a different angle or a different perspective. <laughs> you might realize that it's leaning again and that you need to do a bit more massaging of the folds. Um, stop and enjoy the process and um, we'll meet up soon for step five. So this is step five, um, glue on additional paper decorations. So this is, you know, I said the last step was fun. This is really where it gets fun, thinking about how to kind of zhuzh up your, your house uh, with different elements. Um, so you'll see I have a few things to hand. I just have some scraps of paper, um, some of the papers that I've used previously. I have some clouds that I've already cut out for some reason, um, I've found that these cumulus-shaped clouds have kept onto a lot of my houses, and somehow just having them floating all over the place captures the surreal feeling of the pandemic. I have some tissue paper, too, and some newspaper clippings. I also have the sheets from our kits, um, so I think I'm going to include some COVID-related words on this house as well.
That's it. Thank you for joining me. And now, now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy your COVID artifact.